Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today issued orders discontinuing the newly introduced edition of the Mazaya Housing Program, while the standard Mazaya program remains in effect. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince emphasized the importance of continuing to deliver innovative housing solutions and efficient services for citizens, whose interests remain the core focus of development efforts, including national policies and strategies. Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, received today at the SCW's headquarters the Secretary General of Al Walid Philanthropies, Her Royal Highness Princess Lamia bint Majid Saud Al Saud. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika welcomed Princess Lamia, hailing the political support of Saudi women to reinforce their contribution to the advancement of their country in various fields. She also also hailed the efforts of Al Walid Philanthropies for the past 40 years, especially in the implementation of comprehensive development projects. During the meeting, Her Royal Highness Wife of His Majesty the King explained the task of the Council and its national responsibilities concerning the advancement of Bahraini women and the political support the Council receives, as it's regarded as an official advisory body to His Majesty the King, who in part issued his directives to endorse the National Women Empowerment Strategy. The strategy is considered the first of its kind in the region to be endorsed by the Chief of State, which paved the way to work with all government institutions to boost women's participation in the development process. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika highlighted the role played by SCW in benchmarking competitiveness of Bahraini women locally and internationally. She pointed out Bahrain's initiative in launching an international Women Empowerment Award after the positive results brought about the national one in encouraging institutions to integrate women's needs and boost their participation in development. The SCW Secretary General Ahal Al Ansari gave a presentation on the mechanisms of the National Equal Opportunities Applications Governance Model. Her Royal Highness Princess Lamia loaded the efforts of SCW under the presidency of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika pointing out keenness of Al-Walid philanthropies to avail of Bahrain's pioneering experience in women's empowerment. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, attended this evening the distribution ceremony of the Royal of Her Royal Highness's award to encourage the productive families in its 12th edition at the local level and the fifth at the Arab level at Sharifa Al Awadi Club for Children and Youth in Rifa'a. Her Royal Highness confirmed that Bahrain is working continuously to develop programs aimed at Bahraini productive families to ensure their development and sustainability, support the stability of the family, strengthen its position and improve its role to be an active contributor to the national economy. She pointed out that the projects of productive families in Bahrain are witnesses a remarkable development in terms of employing modern technologies, especially in the field of marketing these projects through electronic platforms to ensure the expansion of the sale and promotion within and outside Bahrain. She noted the the efforts of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development to enhance the talents and development of productive families through the development of quality training programs, development projects, the provision of premises for their work and the investment of partnerships with the private sector to promote their products. Sheikha Sabika stressed the importance of organizing this periodic gathering, which provides an opportunity for our families to meet to exchange experiences and learn about the success stories that have been able to progress in their work, which is the starting point for self-employment and the development of family income resources. She also stressed the need to combine national efforts to support these projects and encourage them to innovate, urging in this regard to unify the efforts to highlight the products of Arab families. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika honored the winners and inaugurated the Productive Families Exhibition, which aims to encourage low-income families to enter small projects, encourage talent and develop skills.
under the patronage of the commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, His Highness Lieutenant Colonel Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a celebration was held to mark Royal Guard Day. A number of sport activities were held, including aquathlon, swimming, running, soccer, volleyball, crossfit, and race walking. In addition to military field competition, comprising shooting warrior contest, map and compass gun disassembly and assembly. The Royal Guard commander honored the sport contest winners and wished them further success. He said the strong competition highlights the readiness and high fitness and endurance of contenders. In addition, the huge participation of the Royal Guard personnel reflects their keenness to positively interact with the sport games, praising the organizational level of the event. Royal Guard Deputy Commander Major General Hamad Khalifa Al Nuaimi and a number of officers were also present.
The Council of Representatives Speaker Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal met with the Saudi Arabia's Speaker of the Shura Council Dr. Abdullah bin Muhammad Al Al Sheikh on the occasion of her participation in the 12th periodic meeting of the GCC President of Legislative Councils held in Jeddah and in the presence of the parliamentary delegation in the Gulf meeting. She highlighted the outstanding relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques. She praised the level of bilateral relations at all levels and fields and the continuous cooperation, integration and coordination it witnesses. For his part, Dr. Abdullah bin Muhammad Al Al Sheikh stressed the deep brotherly historical ties between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain and the keenness of both leaderships, governments, parliament and people to develop them in all fields. The Representatives Council Speaker Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal attended the 12th periodic meeting of GCC Presidents of Legislative Councils held in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Fawzia affirmed that the kingdom, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is continuing its reform project, democratic march, and the process of comprehensive development. She noted that the people of Bahrain have always proved their loyalty and patriotism and have achieved the largest participation in the history of the parliamentary and and municipal elections. She added that the increasing Iranian danger, Iran's continuous interference in the internal affairs of DCC countries, its occupation of Emirati islands and support to terrorist groups is the main danger towards GCC countries, peoples and their future. She asserted that maintaining the work progress of the GCC is a collective responsibility in light of the rapid developments that require a united stance and vision. The Parliamentary Division delegation led by the Representatives Council Speaker Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal chaired attended 12th GCC President of Legislative Council meeting held in Jeddah and chaired by the Saudi Shura Council Chairman Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Al Sheikh. The attendees reviewed the items on the session's agenda and discussed the memoranda and the recommendations of the 11th meeting of the Parliamentary Coordination and Foreign Relations Committee. They also reviewed the Memorandum of the Municipality on the International System of the GCC Parliament Committee in charge of bolstering ties with the European Parliament and decided to adopt the Committee's Internal System Project. Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa met today the Governor of Kyoto Prefecture Takatoshi Nishiwaki as part of His Highness's official visit to Japan. Sheikh Khalifa affirmed his keen interest to activate further joint cooperation between the Southern Province and the Prefecture of Kyoto in all areas, especially in the economic and cultural fields, pointing to the importance of exchanging visits so as to increase communication between the governments and people peoples of the two friendly countries and deepen the relations between them. His Highness added that the Southern Governorate, the largest among the governorates of the Kingdom of Bahrain, is home to many prominent projects and facilities, as well as various important events. For his part, Governor Nishiwaki welcomed His Highness Sheikh Khalifa to Kyoto, stressing his interest in making more joint cooperation between the two provinces in all areas, mainly in the economic and cultural sectors, expressing his country's aspiration to establish a full partnership with the Kingdom of Bahrain. Governor Nishiwaki also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalifa for his efforts to support and consolidate strong and close relations between Japan and the Kingdom of Bahrain. Former Spanish monarch His Majesty King Juan Carlos arrived in Bahrain yesterday evening to attend the Bahrain Grand Prix 2019 Formula One. He was welcomed by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, and the Governor of Muharraq. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, Duke of York, the finale of the second Bahrain edition of the Pitch at Palace competition was held yesterday at the Four Seasons Hotel. Chairman of Tamkin Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa greeted Prince Andrew, Duke of York, upon his arrival at the venue. In his speech to the audience, the Duke of York noted 
noted the importance of Pitch at Palace's partnership with Bahrain and highlighted the partnership with Temkin to make introductions for entrepreneurs from Bahrain to the rest of the world and bring entrepreneurs to Bahrain. Chairman of Temkin commended the competition as an exemplary initiative which works on the global level to promote the entrepreneurial culture and spirit and support future entrepreneurs across various growth stages of their budding ventures. After the speeches, each of the 12 Bahraini entrepreneurs who qualified for the finale gave three-minute presentations in which they highlighted their business projects in front of invited guests, technology and media professionals, investors and an expert judging panel. The Duke of York then announced the winner as follows. Kashta App, Boroblob, Mavi VR Studios, Software App and Telp. The winners will go to the second edition of the competition's Gulf Regional Qualifying Ground Pitch at Palace. The Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi participated in the Arab Media Forum's opening session in the United Arab Emirates, held under the patronage of Vice President, Prime Minister, and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He emphasized that the media and communication sector in the Arab region is currently facing a real problem posed by the tremendous volume of channels and media in the absence of an effective media industry. Al Rumehi stressed that every Arab official must be a key player in the media sector in view of its likely negative impact in the absence of media influences. The minister said that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid is one of the most influential leaders in the region and the world, being a role model to be emulated in development and direct interaction with the media. He praised His Highness's leading initiatives in the various fields, as well as his keenness on boosting the joint Arab media work and his support by all of available means to the welfare and prosperity of the region. The minister pointed out that the expenditure on the media industry today is not less than the expenditure on military industries, which makes this sector the principal front line to defend the capabilities of countries and safeguard their security and stability, as well as boosting their national identity and cultural affinity. He stressed that hostile media channels have continued to meddle in Arab internal affairs in order to undermine its security or divide societies to achieve their malicious objectives. President of the Asian Football Confederation AFC, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, retained his position as chairman of the AFC by acclamation until 2023. This comes following the withdrawal of the remaining candidates for the presidency in the elections scheduled for April 6th to be held in the Malaysian capital Kuala Lumpur. Sheikh Salman's re election affirms the numerous achievements made during his presidency in the last five years. It also affirms the absolute Asian consensus of the president's ability to continue leading the confederation's march towards greater excellence and success. For this occasion, Sheikh Salman extended his sincere thanks and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for their constant support of the Bahraini people to reach leading positions in international national and continental sports association and bodies. Sheikh Salman also extended thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa for continuous backing. Sheikh Salman expressed pride in the Asian Football Association's trust in him to continue his sincere efforts in developing the game in the continent. He underscored that the trust and support shall be motive for him to attain further achievements in the upcoming years. As the weekend of Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix starts today, enthusiasm is building up not only for motorsports fans, but also for visitors of the kingdom. Chief Executive Officer of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, Sheikh Khalid Barahmoud Al Khalifa, highlighted the impact of hosting the Formula One race in the kingdom in terms of contributing to the tourism sector. 
the Bahrain International Circuit hosts the Grand Prix every year, and uh, the Formula One race, and uh, the Formula uh, Grand Prix uh, has um, uh, intensive return on the economy. Uh, we can see that uh, the economy uh, and all its sectors benefit out of uh, the Formula One race. Uh, the hoteliers uh, themselves uh, reach almost uh, uh, an 80, more than 80% occupancy rates in the hotel. It became a season for the uh, main season that the, the, the hotels look forward to. Uh, other sectors such as aviation, airlines, uh, transportation, uh, food and beverage, restaurants, everyone is benefiting out of uh, the Formula One race. Uh, as for the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, we make sure that uh, we market the race, we make sure that uh, uh, our representative offices across the globe market the race and package the race, and uh, we, we, we find a, a full package for the race in, in the kingdom. And in terms of uh, uh, the Formula One race, the, the Formula One race actually uh, positioned Bahrain on the international map. Uh, thousands of visitors uh, visit Bahrain during the Formula One race. Of course, the average expenditure uh, uh, for per person exceeds um, uh, uh, 200 uh, BD a day. So if you, if you, if you calculate the numbers, uh, you can see that the impact of uh, the Formula One race in terms of uh, hotels, transportation, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, and I think creating more seasons within the calendar of Bahrain, such as the Formula One, will only uh, uh, enhance the economic, the economic impact of, 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 of the Formula to Bahrain. Bahrain Tourism Exhibition Authority has uh, seven offices across the globe. Uh, we have an office in, in, in the UK, in France, uh, China, uh, Russia, um, uh, Kuwait, uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, all of these offices, we make sure that we package a full uh, itinerary uh, for the tourists to come to Bahrain. Uh, our UK office last year was able to uh, attract uh, 700 uh, packages or tourists to Bahrain uh, with a full uh, itinerary package. Uh, the same applies on the other uh, offices where hundreds of packages are being sold and coming to Bahrain. So this is a great platform to attract motorsports fans. And then those uh, tourists will come back to, to Bahrain again after discovering it with their families. So uh, we get uh, repetitive tourists uh, out of this, not just during the Formula One sector, but actually building a strong platform and attracting more tourists to Bahrain. The night race is now a major fixture at the BIC, expanding the season and allowing the circuit to offer new opportunities to motorsport enthusiasts and to continue to be a statement of intent for the future of motorsport in the Gulf region. More on this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. All eyes will once again be on the home of motorsport in the Middle East as it hosts the second round of the 2019 Formula One World Championship and the BIC has stepped up its preparations across its 5.412-kilometer Grand Prix track, which will be hosting all the action from March 29th to the 31st. The night race mainly uh, brings its own uh, challenges as well as its benefits. Uh, uh, you know, spectator-wise, uh, it, it, it gives a lot of perspective, beautiful perspective. It, it shows the circuit in its best uh, uh, outfit, uh, the uh, fireworks and, and the big uh, hoopla that goes with it. Uh, weather is great. Uh, uh, as far as preparations for the marshals, uh, we um, it, it's the same. We just make sure that they're well hydrated and uh, we ask them to rest well at night so that when they come they have long days, uh, they're not fatigued. All sorts of upgrades, maintenance and setup work are being done all across the Sakhir facility covering every other corner of the BIC as it is being prepped up to welcome fans for the highly anticipated Bahrain Grand Prix. Lighting-wise, we uh, depend on generators, even though we are connected on the grid. But for safety purposes and to ensure stability, we, can, we depend on generators, uh, backed up by generators, backed up by the grid. So we, we take very good care uh, to make sure continuity always. Uh, we've never had a problem, thank God, and thanks to the Ministry of uh, IWA, Electricity and Water uh, Authority. And everybody uh, in Bahrain really uh, comes, up, comes out and helps. 
The Bahrain Grand Prix will take place as the third Grand Prix of the season and also for the fifth successive year to be held as a night race under BIC's state-of-the-art floodlighting system where the world's fastest single-seaters will be shining in the Sakhir Desert. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim.